My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review for Krampus and this review will have spoilers so that's your warning but this is one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. Like this is an annual watch for me. I think it's one of the best horror movies of all time and I think it's the best movie of 2015. Like, my love for this movie is sky high, and look, it's all subjective, but I find it baffling that so many people don't care for it. It just gave me everything I want from a Christmas horror movie. So, let's get talking about why I do care for it, and the story is just really great. The family dynamic you really buy into... The cousins are really over the top and despicable, but you kind of buy into it at the same time. And the Christmas spirit is lost, there's constantly bickering and fighting, and as a result, Krampus's henchmen are going to just wreak havoc on this family. And what I love so much about this movie is the escalation. Like, there's clear tension with the family and then they get trapped and there's no heat, no power and then Beth has been gone for a while so now they have to look for her and you see a gingerbread cookie, a broken fireplace and some hooves in this one house and then you hear a gunshot and this gunshot is when the stakes raise where you know that Something serious is happening. And from that point on, they know they aren't safe. That anything could happen to anyone. And there's just a real hopelessness. Like, what would you do in this scenario? It kind of reminds me of The Mist with all these people trapped in this location. And if you leave, you're probably going to die. And you're just left wondering, like, what would I do? Like, how could they survive this? And there's a constant confusion to what's going on. And it's just a really darkly depressing movie. Like, I love how, as goofy it might seem in moments, it takes itself seriously most of the time. And because of that, it manages to be tense. It manages to be thrilling. And because of that, it manages to be sad. When people die, it's not just like, oh, okay, yeah, they'll be fine in no time. Like, you feel the weight of it. And when we get to the last act where people are getting kidnapped or dying left, right, and center, I'm not going to lie, it hits me hard. Adam Scott willing to sacrifice himself for his family. Tony Collette telling her son that she loves him right before she dies. Like, it is just tragic and hard-hitting and just really well done. I didn't realize how much I've come to care for these characters until the end. And then Max renounces his wish and... Everything seems back to normal, but then Max opens his gift and it's the bell. And everyone's like, shit, that actually happened. And you can view the ending as they're trapped in a snow globe. Or that Krampus is watching them. Either way, it completely works. The imagery in that last scene is iconic. And I personally think they're just being watched to see if they're being naughty or nice but yes and then we get the direction by Michael Doherty who I think does a really great job the rental hall atmosphere is captured so perfectly like you're just watching it and you're getting cold just sitting on your couch like, you hear the wind outside, and the characters are always trying to keep themselves warm, and it's really effective, and the cinematography in this movie is great. It's perfectly lit throughout, 
And we also get this animated sequence. And it's just a, a work of art. It is beautiful. I love the style, the aesthetic of it. And yeah, that's a standout moment. I, I also love the design of Krampus's lair at the end of this movie. It's just perfect. The practical def effects in the creature designs are really great. Like Krampus wearing a skin mask is perfect. But I also want to talk about his henchmen because this is actually maybe my favorite part of this movie. Like it is so unique, so creative, so Christmassy and so horrific. Like you've got a jack-in-the-box that eats children. You've got this evil flying doll. You've got this robot, this razor sharp teddy bear. You've got these snowmen outside that add an ominous presence. And then you've got these um, elves that look like they came straight from hell, like pure nightmare fuel. You've also got yourself a really great tremor creature. And the gingerbread cookies, while being CGI, are still very entertaining and scary and funny and they nail it. They act like gremlins and that's a very good thing. I also do like the music by Douglas Pipes and how he uses iconic Christmas music in moments. So it manages to sound both haunting and Christmassy, just perfect for this movie. And then we get to the cast. Um, Adam Scott, he's great. I love how he's not this super strong dude, but he's still doing everything he can to protect his family. And I think he brings plenty of personality to him. Then you've got Tony Collette, who I think does a really good job. Uh, David Koshner is perfectly casted. I think he's great in this movie as this loud-mouthed, rude sack of shit. Uh, then you've got Alison Tolman, who I think does a good job. Conchita Farrell is great in this movie. MJ Anthony, I think, does a really great job as well. Stephanie Levy Owen, I think, is good. I did want a bit more from her, though, but I understand why she's not in the movie much. And Krista Stadler, as the grandma, I thought was really great as well. So, this movie just nails it for me on every level. It's got plenty of atmosphere. It can be tense and thrilling. It can be fun and goofy in moments. You've got yourself an iconic villain, some great practical effects, some, um, like, lots of great performances, a perfect paced movie. Like, it escalates so incredibly well. It manages to be emotional when needed. Like, this movie just does it all for me. It is the perfect movie for this time of year. So I'm giving Krampus a 9 out of 10. Okay, have you seen Krampus? What did you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos soon. And Gavin, out.